Isabel Wolf. Hello. Welcome back <laughs> to the podcast. Thank you. Why are you laughing? You laughed first. I wasn't laughing. I was just smiling. I was just happy to be here. <laughs> um, is it's been a while since you've been on the podcast, um, and I thought we would do a bit of a catch up, a catch up with Ed and Is <laughs> catch ups with Ed and Is. Um, because there's been a lot going on, mm. uh, so we can talk a little bit about what's happening in our own lives, um, but also what's happening <laughs> with, with the business. <laughs> also, what's happening with business. So, yep. what's been happening in process programming? What's happening here at Coastal? Just give give the listeners a bit of an update on life. How's yeah. that sound? Good. So, let me start by asking you, like, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing better now. Um, it's been hard for us to all to navigate the last six months, I think, with everything going on, but also changes in our lifestyle, um, being pregnant and all of that and everything that we need to do moving forward. It feels like this year has, it's almost July, like that's madness, you know, and I thought nine months of pregnancy would go by really slow, <laughs> but it didn't. And so just on top of everything that we wanted to do this year, because it was an unexpected pregnancy, that's not something that I'm... I'm sh not saying so it was like it wasn't really in our plans you know mm. and then so it's like handling that on top of everything that we wanted to achieve it's been a lot to handle but I've I've enjoyed every moment there's we've done so much that which we're about to talk about that has been exciting and fun and very grateful yeah okay two questions yeah my first question is um rewind to about a year and a half ago when we were mid towards the end of the pandemic mm-hmm and one of our biggest frustrations was that we feel like that we have so much to offer, so much to give, but we couldn't do any of it. Mm. And how frustrated we were that we couldn't do the things. Fast forward to now, we're in a position where we are probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> how many ideas we have pouring out of our ears and mm. how much we want to do and how little time we have. Isn't that quite funny? It's, it's very funny, <clears throat> but it's also like this is what we love and we've been itching to do it for three years. And finally, as soon as we knew it, like in January, even before that, we started planning in December because we opened our doors, what, like September of last year. And we were like, we're going to go. This next year is about doing everything that we haven't been able to do for the making last up, two years. Up for lost time. Exactly. And we <clears throat> knew it was coming and we've wanted this and it, none of it would have been possible if we didn't number one envision it but number two we didn't want it and we wouldn't didn't work hard for it right so it's like I, we're so lucky to be doing everything that we've dreamed of doing finally and it's like about work and everything that we're achieving there's zero complaints at all it's like we love this <laughs> <clears throat> but there are still some complaints <laughs> <laughs> we do love it we do love it i think we okay i'll speak from, on behalf of myself yeah. but i know i'm speaking on behalf of you as well because we share i think a lot of we have a lot of conversations about this mm. as well as with the rest of our kind of like senior coaching or management team which is like the feeling of i guess it is a feeling of being overwhelmed um maybe anxiety a mm. little bit as well um a feeling definitely at the moment like we have so much on and we are just keeping afloat mm. i don't mean financially but i mean like we are just getting things done and squeezing them in like i think in japan they call this kaizen production <laughs> which is like just in time production mm. which is what we're doing we're not really like planning that much ahead right now we're kind of just rolling with the punches yeah um being creative and innovative as we go and mm. going doing a lot of things by feel um but we always bring it round to the fact that when we're in those moments of feeling overwhelmed and you know maybe we're just kind of unloading a bit of frustration on what we have on our plate we always come back around to but you know what like we choose to do this mm -hmm. and we love doing it yeah and that's always like my closure when mm -hmm. i have those little uh i wouldn't even call them meltdowns or breakdowns when i have those little <laughs> those uh, those moments of introspection yeah um it's like you know what this is i don't want to be doing anything else yeah. i love it when i reflect on that feeling a lot though it's we work best in those moments and that's something we need to do better but it's because 
we're like we're not out of the situation that we've been in you know so for the last three years we've been on this fight mode it's like we've had to adapt we've had to do things last minute we've had to innovate and every day was we were living day by day to see if we were going to make it to the next day you know and Mm. so that fight mode for three years like we're not out of it we're now recovering from that and that still requires us to continue to fight and I feel like that's going to be for a little while longer until we hit a system and we hit a smooth road where it's like okay now we can relax and we can plan because we can't put our foot off the pedal right now because we're still not a hundred percent. Do you get what I mean? Like we're still making up <clears throat> yeah. for all of the losses that we've been. But had. I think my experience of, you know, 15 years running this business, like you know, <laughs> it's never going to be, you, we never actually <laughs> have those moments where we're like, Oh no, we got everything set up. We can mm. just chill, take our foot off the gas a little bit because there's, mm. there is always something that you want to horizon. achieve. Yeah. There's either, and it's like when you, you know, I find this, this is very much myself that, that does this, but I also know that having hired a team of people like yourself, mm. like everyone else within this team, hard charging people that want to get the best out of every day and make the most out of their time on this planet. It means that the moment you finish a project, you want something else. The moment I feel like I have nothing pressing on my plate. Yeah. I look for something mm. and I create it. And I think a lot people listening might be like, okay, this guy sounds like he has a problem. <laughs> like this guy needs to like do some meditation and like he needs to chill the fuck out type mm-hmm. thing. But I do a lot of that already. Yeah. I do a lot of that to allow me to do this, um, which is a conscious choice, right? It's yeah. like, I know what I want to give to my work mm-hmm. every day. So in order to do that, what do I have to do in my time outside of work? Chill and, the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that enables me to do it. Um, yeah. But yeah. I don't think it's the the charging forward i think what's frustrating us is we're trying to charge forward but we're also putting out loads of fires Mm. and it's like if we just didn't have to put out as many fires and just solely achieve goals and do the next one the next one the next one we would have more time we would have more emotional capacity and mental capacity in order to do that but do you want to share what some of the fires are yeah so i think financially for sure is a huge one for the business is like coming out of a pandemic we had to work really freaking hard to get ourselves out of a financial rut that unfortunately loads of businesses were in and we were one of the lucky ones to survive i think personnel um we went through a lot of internal because we did a restructuring which you and i've talked about and we've actually never caught up since we started Mm. that um it wasn't smooth sailing we knew it wasn't gonna be smooth sailing it's actually been a lot of work and it's been very hard but we know that it's the right thing to do and we constantly remind ourselves of that but that caused a lot of personnel not issues but just things that we had to change in terms of mindset and sort of like we've had to put a lot of time into yeah, our team. I was going to say it required us putting a lot yeah. of time into individuals. Yeah. Which was very important for that process, but more very time, draining more time well. than we thought. Exactly. We have to go into. Yeah. So that maybe putting out fire is not the right word to do it, but it's just allocating time in places where maybe we didn't initially think we would need mm-hmm. to do that. Right. And it's, so it was personnel, it was financials, it was even just last minute things that weren't working and that we had to change, you know, like whether it's we wanted to increase prices in coastal, like that was a huge thing that required us to actually sit down, put a lot of time and effort into it. And then putting time into members who we had to kind of explain the situation. And it's like, those aren't ideal things that happen, but yeah. you have to do it. I actually want to talk about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's, I think it's, um, if there are other business owners out there, I think we had some important lessons mm. that we should probably share. Um, so context is that we hadn't done a price increase in four years, four years. Uh, and you know, it's not right to be putting a price, doing a price increase mid pandemic. I think everyone could agree with that, but you know, we had felt that not felt, we knew that demand was exceeding supply. You know, we, we had been at a capacity cap within the gym and we were fast approaching one already. So we knew that demand was there. Um, we also knew that we invested a lot into the business. Um, to bring more value to our customers every single day, whether that's coaching, um, coaching development, you know, the back end systems of, of how we run the gym and the experience that they get. And then of course, equipment and constant facility upgrades and the process pro- programming growing, which obviously benefits all our affiliates, Coastal being one of them. So it just felt it was the right time to do it. Um, 
and it's always a hard thing to do a price mm. increase i think one thing we should probably agree on is that human nature we all want more for less there's no one who wants to get the same but has to give more for it mm. this is not ingrained in how we how we operate and when you can accept that you also have to accept that when you're going to increase your prices and not necessarily change anything in the immediate instance there's probably going to be some kickback um, or at least people expressing how they feel in their opinions so the way that we did it was we had written a, uh, a letter that went out to all of our members and that was written it was it was signed off by the general manager which is yourself uh, and that was my decision to have you do that um, and then you know we had given uh, a period of I think three months yeah. before the price would actually increase gave people the opportunity to to buy packages um, up you know upfront packages uh, which would basically mean Keep it, would, it potentially price. would be a, over a year before yeah. they had to pay the new prices um, and generally speaking I guess what we expected was that we were going to have loads of emails being like, oh my God, you guys totally deserve yeah. this price <laughs> increase. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to pay you 10% more yeah. uh, for getting the same thing. Obviously, that didn't really happen. Yeah. We had uh, quite a few people come up to us in person and say, by the way, totally justified. Mm. Um, happy to, I still love this place. Happy to pay with the increased prices. Mm. Well done. Yeah. But not that many people do. I think a lot of people were sat in the silence and that kind of created a bit of anxiety and that's been like... Yeah. Well, if I'm not saying anything, like, are they happy? Are they sad? Are they pissed off? Or are they, are just, they going to leave <clears throat> like the next leave? month? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we had some people actually voice their opinion saying that they wanted justification and clarity on why the prices were increased. But one of the, one of the things we did, which in hindsight, I still don't know if it's the right answer, um, was we listed all the things that we had done. And I guess our reasoning for that was we wanted to justify it or provide in case... Let's say someone had just joined and they hadn't been a part of the experience, mm -hmm. the coastal experience for the last three years. They hadn't seen anything that we'd done yeah. and suddenly get hit with a price increase. And uh, we wanted to basically provide insight. insight into, you know, why we had decided to do this. And what that ended up doing was that people then went through that list with a yeah. fine comb and basically picked us apart and said, you know, you bought a ski egg, but I've never used a ski egg. And mm -hmm. therefore, I don't think it's fair that I, that I have to pay it, for more, yeah. which I <clears throat> obviously that's not the right way to look at it but at the same time i totally understand where mm -hmm. they're coming from if you're going to put those reasons out people want to see that that's directly impacting them mm -hmm. and why they have to have to um increase their prices so in hindsight what we this is the whole the beautiful thing about reticular <laughs> activation system right when you do one thing and you're thinking about one thing and one thing's at the forefront of your mind you start to see it everywhere mm -hmm. so what we started to see was all these other companies increasing. who were also increasing <laughs> their prices and it was interesting like okay well how are these guys communicating it, communicating it with their people and most people just like our prices are increasing. Prices are increasing. This is the date. In one month's time. <laughs> like, here's a heads up. I'm like, oh my God, that's all they did? Yeah. Um, I definitely think that not listing all those reasons is appropriate. I do think that actually putting, scheduling time, especially with your longer serving members, people who've been there for a long time, scheduling that time away, knowing that you should be investing in your long serving members, uh, just investing some time to explain the reasons why we've done it, um, maybe even get an opinion on it mm. or just make them feel loved and cared for. I think that's something we should have forecasted. I think the letter should have come from me. And in fact, I think I would have actually done like a video, mm. you know, actually put my face on it uh, to make it a little bit more heartfelt, to make it feel less like it was just a transaction and that people weren't cared for because uh, that's very not characteristic of coastal fitness and the process programming. Um, what else? What else would I have done? Um, yeah, I think, was there anything else that popped up? I think what was hardest about it is just that you and I take our jobs very personally. And so when... You take your job much more personally than you, I do. You, I do as well. You did get affected pretty personally with yeah. some of the conversations and stuff. And it's, but it's because it's not that we tie our identity to it, but it's because we give so much to it. And I think it was just an emotional shock we didn't expect like you said we thought everyone would be like this is amazing we support you guys it's been so hard we want you to do well and when that didn't happen we were kind of like we felt like oh no did we do something wrong you yeah. know and then that was the hard part which is why i'm like i said that the, this was a fire that we were putting out and like yeah. because we didn't expect that that toll that it was going to take on us um yes there are definitely things we could have and we probably 
should think about in the future, but I also completely think that it's a normal part yeah. of and running a business. And no one really enjoys a price increase. Yeah. The company doesn't enjoy it. The people yeah. receiving a price increase don't enjoy it. Um, I think, you know, one thing that does affect me still, you know, and I think my, it's not that my skin has gotten tougher with mm-hmm. the years, but I'm just better at removing emotion from, you know, the way that one might communicate with me. Removing the emotional and thinking more about the rational putting myself in the shoes of the individual. Mm. Um, and I'm able to do that much quicker now. The old me would have been very triggered mm. and my emotions probably would have, you know, shot up very, very quickly. I would have responded with something probably that I shouldn't have responded with, or I would have carried that emotion with me for a really, really long mm. time. Um, it doesn't mean I don't still get triggered. Uh, it just means that I, f- I notice the trigger now. Mm. You know, when someone said something, maybe I think it's mean or harsh or worded, in a very aggressive manner that feels like it's accusational or personal. And I just have to take a breath and it's like, okay, put myself in their shoes, where are they coming from? And mm-hmm. honestly, 99.9% of the time, like they're coming from a place of good. Uh, they don't mean to be malicious. It's just when we just all communicate differently, yeah. um, I guess. And the, the thing that I'm always aware of is, or what the thing I think about when, when we receive some emails from, from members uh, that are maybe worded in a more negative tone They're not necessarily just members just i guess anyone mm-hmm. in in this world is that i always just want to say like i'm still a human mm-hmm. i know i'm representing a business and an organization which is like this tangible four walls of a building that has services but we're still human beings yeah. and right and i think human beings deserve to be spoken to respectfully and respectfully and kindly and it's not about making one another feel bad or good or right or wrong or justified or unjustified. It's just seek to understand. Um, and that is what I feel. I, that's how I feel about it. And the way that I pay that forward is that I, I just don't communicate to other people that way. Mm. So if ever I have, you know, I want to voice a concern about an experience or to a, another business, um, I will always do it, you know, speaking to the person. I will always seek to understand first like why something has been done um, and do it. And then once I understand why a decision has been made, maybe then that's my option to share my opinion and to seek to make it, you know, to find a solution. Um, yeah. 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 So that was, and again, that wasn't something we'd planned. You know, it was something like, oh, well, we think this needs to happen. Let's do it. In true Isabel and Ed fashion, yeah. you know, so it was like, it's not like we have a year plan. It's like, oh, these are the things going to happen. It's like, nope, we need to do this. And it's a lot more work than just let's increase our prices. It's the communication. It's all the back end. Yeah. It's all the membership emails. And it's everything that follows after that, right? So we had that. We had staff leave. We had staff join, which, again, was unexpected and unforeseen circumstances. We had group class ca- like canceled we changed schedule we changed roster of our because one of the feedback was that they wanted to see more coaches so it's like changing the entire coaching roster and on top of that were the things that were planned which is the things that fired us up which was we ran three athlete camps this year um we've traveled we've onboarded two new affiliates like all in the span of such a short amount of time we've launched a new instagram page for our athlete we had the open, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, which is all the things that we love about this job. Those were the planned things. And then it's the unplanned things that then shakes you up being like, Mm. we didn't allocate enough time (laughs) in our day to do all of these things. And I think that's what I mean by like, we're just constantly on the go. And if we were only on the go for the things we planned, then that would be great but it's never going to be that case i guess yeah. there's always going to be fires that you're putting out you just took a couple of you've traveled a couple of times now mm. uh, a few times you went to philippines twice yeah went for a wedding we had the athlete camp of course went yeah. to bangkok recently for mm. a little how how are you feeling with all the travel like traveling being a part of your life again yeah i think i used to travel <clears throat> a lot when i um lived in barcelona and obviously with covid i didn't and it's been it's been really nice. It's been refreshing, and I think it makes you appreciate home and what you have a lot more. It's also a good reset. It's like when you take days off, 
in the same city or the same town you're not actually taking any time off because you're stuck in the same routine you're in the same environment I think going away and seeing people I hadn't seen in a long time so I went to my best friend's wedding we went to Cebu and I had loads of friends who I used to do CrossFit with there um, I went to Manila and I saw old high school fr- uh, university friends there as well and then when I went to Bangkok I hung out with Babs and just spent some time alone and it's just like being in new places you realize more and more to appreciate what you have and where you are and why you've chosen this place as home but I'm so thankful that we're able to do it and that we have like the financial means to do it but also the freedom of work to be able to do those kinds of things I know you have loads of trips planned as well and you've done a lot of traveling Mm. in the last six months which it's weird like I think one thing that has sat with me because I thought it was just me was you also feeling guilty about traveling because I've felt that even if I've only gone away for like a Friday Saturday Sunday which is technically a weekend the Friday's a public holiday I'd be like I you know what one telltale thing that you said that made me so aware that you're guilty about traveling because yeah. I do it all the time is saying that you're grateful for what you have <laughs> N- number one that is like you know overemphasizing how grateful you are for what you have but the n- number two is that when I asked you oh how long are you going for when you said to Bangkok mm-hmm. you're like oh I'm just going I'm just going till next Friday. Like I'll be back here on Friday. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And straight away, yeah. I'm like, you try and justify because you're like, oh, I'm actually not taking that many days mm. off. I still do it. It's still yeah. ridiculous that I do that. Um, but yeah. No, that's one thing is that there's still that guilt, you know, of like, well, I'm taking time off. But because you're not, we're not even taking time off. We're still doing all of our online stuff, but it feels weird not being here because I feel like we've all been nowhere but here in these four walls for the last three years right but it's it's such an amazing thing that we get to travel and we finally get to meet all the people we've connected with online like that and that was our dream when we started the process programming you know it was like connecting with so many people around the world that we never would have met and we finally met them and it was honestly like we knew them it wasn't yeah. <laughs> it wasn't anything like meeting someone for the first time it's like oh you're an old friend and i, I really i really felt that in the Cebu athlete camp mm. where we had you know, we had 45 we had sold that camp in six days sold yeah, out that camp in that six was days. crazy um we had no idea and our affiliates uh, our affiliate subtero um who've been with us pretty much about a year now yeah. um they the first time we've ever run an athlete camp at an affiliate mm. um and didn't really know how it was going to go down one advantage we knew straight away was like oh these guys that they have a vested interest mm. in actually making this camp successful whereas when we're running camps in gyms that we're not affiliated with they didn't really care yeah. it's like they're getting their fee for the hour it's like you do all your work like we'll see when you get here type thing and so just a shout out to ac and the subtero guys over there like they you guys really really made that trip just so smooth yeah. sailing for us i mean yes you worked really hard behind the scenes as well we still got our jobs to do in all the preparation but little things like sorting out the food sorting mm. out sponsors sorting out the shirts yeah. pick up getting like, us transport places, feeding us like, accommodation yeah. food like we were just looked after so, so well. well and i did feel like going into that camp there was so many people that you know we got we've got quite a big following of people in the process programming in the philippines and of course we have that affiliate which is a thriving affiliate that has a really big membership so we're kind of seeing these people on instagram every day who mm. are tagging us and we're kind of or we're, we're following them on our premium subscription and it was really nice to kind of walk in the room for the first time and be like ah i know you i know you i know mm. you and i kind of knew everything almost like kind of knew what they do on the weekends and it was like yeah we've been friends for yeah. for a really long time yeah. and also just getting to connect with our affiliates that's something we've now done uh we've done with Indonesia. almost all of our affiliates we went yeah. to you know we spent 10 days in indonesia macau. visiting our three affiliates there we went to macau two consecutive weekends with mm-hmm. mobox running a gymnastics seminar mm-hmm. running a weightlifting seminar actually watching them do business mm-hmm. you know that's that's so cool yeah. and also you just learn so much like in a day of just shadowing two classes at first i was like i've seen more in this <laughs> i learned more in this last few hours than i have in the last five months about the way that this business is going down yeah. um and then being able to hang out and work with the subtero coaches Mm -hmm. and management team and what i will say is that the affiliate program this was the original dream right was that we we onboard affiliates who essentially we are creating coastal fitnesses Mm -hmm. around the world under the process programming banner and then you know what we realized in the affiliate program is just how much we do here 
um, that we expect our affiliates to do. And and if, when you're not actually in these affiliates helping to implement and change and educate, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Like it's really hard to teach someone how to completely change up their fundamentals process. Mm -hmm. Okay, things like pricing and packages and memberships and email templates, that's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that's like physical skill sets that you need to teach people when you're just doing it online it's quite a challenge but i have been very 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 pleasantly surprised with all the affiliates we visited as to the standard mm. that they are holding themselves to and i'm just thinking like wow this could really i could a coastal fitness client could walk into this gym right now and probably not see too many differences yeah. and and you know be be yeah be experiencing a service that is is what they would expect and that was like i just felt was very proud to see that no i think like i've i've said like I, the affiliate program is probably out of all of our branches the one thing that i'm most proud of because i feel like we create the most impact there because you're starting from the top of an organization working all the way down and everybody that they impact is a byproduct of us being able to impact the top mm. right and i feel like we're it was very stagnant for a while because we weren't able to make these connections and meet people. But now it's like something that's shooting through and I can just see like the process affiliates all across Asia and hopefully we expand beyond that. And we're just leveling it up businesses, fitness businesses at a general in general, but as well as how they coach and how they take care of individuals amongst themselves, right? And I think that's just such a huge impact because we're also, when we do our affiliation, we're trying to change the way the organization is structured, how they take care of their staff, actually making careers for fitness professionals, marketing, you know, business systems. Like, it's more than just, here's our name, take it, and that, that'll be good enough for you to get more clients because that's not what we're about mm. at all. And I feel like we're really tr creating the most impact through our affiliation um, branch. Yeah, so we should mention our two newest affiliates. Yeah. We have... All Out. We have All Out in Manila. Mm -hmm. So it's our first affiliate in Manila, Philippines. Yeah. Um, they have just successfully onboarded and are now live. Yeah. Uh, we have CrossFit Ethos also in Manila. Yeah. Uh, they have a pretty rock star mm -hmm. team of yeah. people who've been in the CrossFit space for quite a while. Coaches, business owners. Mm -hmm. um, so they are going to be starting from scratch. So this is our second affiliate that started from like the ground bottom. Yeah. No physical premises yet. Yeah. Basically allowing us to be a part of building their business from the bottom up which is really cool mm -hmm. because it's like we don't you know we have that ability to make implement change right from the start and you know when you're an existing affiliate and you join the process of course like change is always hard for everyone but having to you know re-educate your staff and your members and your community that we're now going to be moving to this and this is going to be the new system like that mm -hmm. whole process takes a lot of time, a lot of education, and there's no one way to do it. The way that we've helped our affiliates have been very different from all our other affiliates. So um, this is always exciting. You know, Mobox was the first one and we helped them, you know, build it from scratch and we're doing that again now. And I think I've certainly learned, I think we both learned a lot through the, Mo the Mobox um, launching that we're now taking on board with Ethos awesome. and being like, okay, these are the mistakes we made last time. This is what worked, this is what didn't. Yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, it's, we're also leveling up our systems and adding more value to that. Like now we have other people who help on that team and then we have videos and we have homework and we just provide way more than we did initially. And I can just foresee this being something that will just take off. And that's some that's what I'm really, really excited about um, for one of the projects that's upcoming this year that yeah. we're doing. Um, yeah, so... Like we mentioned, we had our camps that were really amazing. We had... Let, let's talk about that. Though, yeah. Because I want to talk about the process programming, the affiliate, mm. the, the, the athlete side. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, within the process, we have kind of like, it's a two-headed dragon right now. We have <laughs> the affiliate, the affiliate model <laughs> to the affiliate business, and we have our online subscribers. Yeah. Uh, online subscribers are people who are signing up to our live, perform, compete, elite, or our build programs. Mm -hmm. Um, and soon we're going to have our coaches, our coaching course, um, <laughs> TBC. it's coming, it's coming <laughs> a little update on that. Cause I, I am actually a little bit embarrassed about how many times I said we're going to launch that. We still haven't done it, but we are, all the content's done. Our PDS are now coming through. So basically the whole idea is that we wanted, uh, people to have, we were saving paper. So we're not going to send like a physical booklet, but you're going to have 
kind of like a walk along through the whole course with mm-hmm. imagery and chance to make notes and it looks sick um, and I can't wait to share that but for now those are our two avenues the athlete online subscriber side of things is something that's I'm really really fired up about at the moment and I think the thing that capped it all off was the course three athlete camps um, and that Philippine camp was just like was just awesome <laughs> you know just how how it sold out so quickly and we had a wait list and we had to turn people away mm. and just the vibes of the weekend and people really being proud to be a part of the process i think that's mm. what makes me the most proud um obviously in our team as well mm. you know we've got a team that executes those camps so well now <clears throat> and we have a great time doing it yeah. but i think for me then going to the semi-finals yeah. and being back in that arena for a long time i you know i couldn't didn't make it last year because the pandemic made it very hard to leave Hong Kong. Uh, we didn't have them the years before that mm-hmm. because of the pandemic. So it's been, really been like almost four years since I was at a CrossFit like sanctioned event, mm-hmm. <clears throat> whether it's a co- being a coach or an athlete. And just being in that space again, um, being you know surrounded by like-minded people. So loads of coaches, loads of athletes, loads of fans who all just love the same thing. <laughs> I was just like, fuck this. These yeah. are my people, you know? <laughs> This is where um, I want to be. This is where I want to be. And I'm <laughs> gutted. I'm like, part part of me is gutted. I haven't been there, but it's like, okay, well, I just want to make sure that I'm a part of these moving, moving forward, forward in the future. Yeah. And it really just affirmed how much I love working with people in this space. You know, whether your goal is just a RX across the open, which is our upper form program. Mm. It's just to maybe take part in the cross program, the cross open at all, which is our live program, or, you know, th- to qualify to the quarterfinals, which is, you know, 8,000 8, people around the world. Maybe more than that. 80,000. 8,000. No, more than that. 300,000. 30,000. 30,000 people. How did you go from 8 Pretty crazy. To yeah, that was, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's very wrong. And of course, you know, like working with the elite. Uh, that's mm, that's, a, that's yeah. an audience that I really, really enjoy working with. Um, just because I just love working with athletes. We had our um, biggest showing this year for semifinals. Yeah, well. we had a, we had a, very, I think we were all surprised. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not, not surprised in the sense that we don't back ourselves to be getting people to honestly the CrossFit Games. Like I, I really believe that we have the caliber of coaches and the skill sets to be getting people to CrossFit Games every year. Um, I mean, and prove to everyone mm-hmm. he's hundred percent good enough to be there. Uh, and he is a product of the process. But we had, you know, another two individuals represent us in Africa. Uh, we had two teams, you know, coaching a team again, first time for me in a really long time. Yeah. And being able to be a part of two teams journeys, that's something I really enjoyed. Um, having another individual on the team as well. Mm. It was cool to have so many people wearing the process shirt yeah. in Asia, um, at the Asian, far, at the Far East Throwdown. And just, I think, you know, I've always said this on a podcast, every time I've traveled, especially around Asia is just, you know, people know about us mm. and when we're in this bubble you just you forget about that yeah because not everyone's that vocal on instagram not everyone feels comfortable enough to send someone a message to say hey i really love your work you know keep mm. it going or it's impacting yeah. me in this way what i've learned is most people don't give you praise more people will give you criticism mm-hmm. we've learned that in this gym <laughs> and that's also the same Everywhere, in but, you, but you know we we are hardwired yeah. to look for the negative. The negative. Yeah. Like if you're a forest dweller, you're gonna remember the fruit that almost killed you, yeah. not the fruit that tasted really well, because that's what we need for survival. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know why I always remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> like you said, I think it's good to be able. Like you went straight from the camp to the semifinals, you know, and it's like those are the kinds of things that we're looking forward to doing now is just being able to go out and see all of our hard work being known, being shown and having it then recipient because like, yes, it was a buttload of effort to do all those camps that we don't probably see return on investment as quickly as we want to, or it's so much work to do all of these programs and stuff. Like you individually program for people that are the semifinals and we don't get any return on that. But what we do get return is, when we go out there and we see it and we feel it and we just know that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And like you always say, if you continue to work hard and you do good things, it will come back, right? So it's like, we've said this in the beginning of the year that yeah, maybe it's been a rocky start in work, in our personal lives and all those kind of things. But it's like, 
we just feel it that something's gonna come soon you know and like i i can't put a finger or a tangible thing on it but i yeah. do feel it and it's not like when I, <laughs> when I always say that it's not like i'm expecting this one huge yeah. thing to happen and then it's like our problems are solved yeah it's like but when you when you when you look back on the last year there is always these continual, mm. continually these good things that are just moving the needle in the right direction. That keep you moving forward. Keep you moving forward. Yeah. Like there's little boosts of motivation. Mm. You've got to celebrate those wins when they happen. And those those wins sometimes feel like every day. Like it's a new subscriber or a new influx of mm. subscribers or a new affiliate yeah. is emailing who wants to be a part of the process or someone's asking about sponsoring the podcast. Mm. Or, you know, there's these little things that you've got to celebrate those wins because as we know, as human beings who are hardwired, to focus on the negatives when you do get the negative it becomes a much much bigger deal than all those positives yeah. right so if you're not celebrating the wins of the little things um you know that when something bad happens in life or in business that's going to occupy a lot of your time and if you if you lose appreciation and gratitude for the wins it's going to feel like life is just filled with all the negatives yeah. and i think that's um yeah i've definitely been in that been in that place before so now it's like we've got to make sure we remind each other when we're doing good work or when we, we've got to remind each other to celebrate. So, you know, on our groups, it's like whenever we get a new subscriber on the process yeah, a big or deal. a comment, like we'll just send, we'll take a screenshot and send it around to the whole team and be like, come on, we're fucking crushing it. <laughs> uh, and I think that's important, you know? Yeah. But it's also mo like sit downs like this, like, yeah, we're together every day, but we don't actually look back at what we've done. You and I are kind of just like you said, we have blinkers on moving forward every day is what can we do next what more can we do what more can we do and i feel like when we actually sit down to do these podcasts and these catch-ups we're like holy shit we've done so much it's yeah. only june and look at everything that we've already done and we're just worried about the next four things that we need to do right now right so and we, we actually did that with our team on tuesday yeah. every tuesday we do professional development and uh i think that was just this residing feeling that it was like okay maybe today <laughs> let's not do professional development right we're always yeah. learning we're always pushing each other forward i could feel that i think we all felt within a the room heavy. it was like yeah let's just have a catch up so we sat the whole coaching team and yourself you snuck yourself in there <laughs> and so did al 2.0 <laughs> mr media man and we just sat around the table and was like right what's what's on the forefront of everyone's minds mm. like what's been happening in your lives and it's not that we don't have those conversations but those conversations you know might happen at a post-workout 20 minute day scroll mm -hmm. or it's like on the workout floor but they're not they're not real quality it's not quality time where you've got an hour just to sit and talk and listen um and it was really nice mm -hmm. actually I, I went home that night and reflected and was like that was one of the highlights of my day that day yeah i do think that is really important it's checking in with yourself like i think something that liam was very open about that i think you and i resonate with a lot is we love our work so much, but sometimes we forget that there's more to life than just our work and we can't forget to prioritize that. Yeah. It's like we work seven days a week because we choose to, because we greatly enjoy it. We have so much on our mind and doing that allows us extra time throughout the other days to do the other stuff that we enjoy. That's why we can have 20 minutes a day and that's why we yeah. can train and all that kind of stuff, right? But like just what he, <clears throat> what I took away from that was that it is an effort to do the things you enjoy. Do, yeah. Does that make sense? So it's like you actually have to schedule and plan and make sure that you're having those little moments for yourself, even if it's sitting and reflecting on all the things that you've done and where your mindset is now and what it's what you need to do to make tomorrow just ideal as today was because mm. otherwise you just easily get caught up in the, well, the next day passes and it's exactly the same as the last, right? I, I, I liken it to... Because not everyone will be listening to this, being like, "I don't really love my job that much." Yeah, like it's not. It's not hard. <laughs> it's not hard for me to take a day off work. Yeah. Um, but you can replace work with anything that you love doing, mm. and you could get lost in and do every single day. Yeah. So I always think about it with training. It's like I love training. It's genuinely the one of the best, if not the best, hour of my every single day. Mm. And some, I wish I could just do it every single day, because I know how good it makes me feel, and I love the process of improving. Mm. But I know that I have to take rest days if I want to be able to keep on doing this for a really long time. Mm. And sometimes you forget that mm. and you start skipping out on rest days and you feel fine in the first week. In the second week, you're still feeling great. And you're like, I'm being so productive. I'm crushing my training. Gains are improving faster <laughs> yeah. than they ever were. And then what's happened, what happens in week three is that because you haven't taken those rest days, you haven't given yourself time to unwind and relax and recover and regenerate. 
then you start to run into some issues and you start to feel tired, fatigued, burnt out, unmotivated. Yeah. And that's exactly the same, the principle that I have to apply to my work. Mm. It's like, I, I can easily sit on a Sunday in front of my computer for hours and do really productive work. And I would genuinely love it. Mm. I wouldn't be resentful of it. I wouldn't complain about it because it's like, I can just get lost in it. Mm. But I know the cost on Monday if I do that is going to be that I can't have the same Monday I had last week. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, you've got to plan. You've got to plan like that rest. <laughs> it's like a deload. <laughs> like we don't really ever want to get to a point where we're having to take forced deloads. You're yeah. forced to rest because you haven't managed your time well. And it's the same with this. Like I know I have to remind myself, so like even Sunday just gone. Mm. I had a couple of hours and had nothing planned. And straight away my mind was like, oh, well, you got a pretty long to-do list with work. Why don't you just get stuck into yeah. it now? Like, what else are you going to do? It's raining outside. Like, you can't go, you can't go outside. Yeah. And I was like, can't do that. Nah, you know what? I'm just not going <laughs> to do it as much as I want to. Yeah. And I actually had to lock my office door. Yeah. Close my office door in my house. Mm. And be like, don't even look at the computer. Yeah. And yeah, I'm happy I did it. Yeah. I think that's something I'm struggling with now because you and I have a meeting on Friday about my maternity leave. And that's one thing that I've... I don't know how I'm going to do it, you know, and it's, you'll obviously find out, but I have like no intention of completely not doing anything. Well, you've been pushing off this meeting. So long. You're like, Ed, it's going to be fine. I'm like, is he? <laughs> you're having a child. Like you're not going to come out of the hospital and like jump on a Zoom call with an affiliate to like onboard them. I'm like, you know, maternity leaves a thing for a reason. I like know, you need to I take know. that time off. But like, that's just, it's hard to wrap your head around it because I've never been through it. So, and like, as much as people tell you what it's going to be like and what it's going to feel like, you don't know, you know? And I think, yeah, that's just currently what I'm struggling with is how much, and it's not even the guilt of not working or not being here. It's just like FOMO. And it's like mm. not being a part of it and not being in it. And like, that's what I'm going to miss the most, right? And so it's like, trying to now navigate this new life journey on top of everything that we want to achieve and everything that I wanted to do this year because like I said it was an unexpected pregnancy firstly it was hard in the beginning because I was at the best physical condition that I've ever been in as an athlete I was so fired up for this season and right before the CrossFit Open we found out I was pregnant we were like this is amazing but I can't do the open and I was gutted. I was gutted. I'm not going to lie about that. And then the first trimester was really hard. And then now it's like, okay, what is it going to look like? Cause I'm, I feel like I'm at the peak of my career as well. And like, we're just about to take off. So it's like, what By is the that? Way, just going to remind you, we've said that about five nah, times now. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we're at a crossroads right now. We're about to take off. We will. Okay. I still believe it. What I'm saying is that there's going to be another crossroads. Yeah, for sure. But then it's like, well, how do I now balance that? And like, I know you've felt those and that's why you've pushed off also like, oh, it'll be three years. Oh, it'll be two years. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's hard. It's a hard thing to be able to go into a new chapter of life, but not let go of who you are now even though i know you always have to grow evolve and change it's like but i'm not done with this chapter <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean i feel that way about but, it but life is telling you yeah. it's time to be it's done time, yeah. with that chapter and you've got to enter a new season of life yeah. like you always say and every season's gonna demand a new a you different you yeah yeah <laughs> I, I wanted to just say like you know a lot of the things we've been talking about is like the, the guilt around not working or the guilt around holidays mm. and i do think you know because a lot of people experience this, especially business owners you know because I, I speak to a lot of business owners because we probably share very similar feelings emotions and stories a big thing that contributes to allowing one to not feel guilt of course there is something internally within you and within me that causes us to feel guilt probably a lot of that is our attachment to our work, work. and mm -hmm. feeling like our work defines our self-worth and that's not good mm. um i think we both worked on trying to have a healthy relationship i certainly have it's not it's not cured but it's oh god a hundred times better than it ever used to be um but another another big thing that contributes to allowing individuals to not feel that guilt is the culture of the organization and the culture of the team yeah. and if you have you can foster a community of people who want one another to take time off and to take time for themselves and they encourage them and they support them to do that. It's very different versus the culture 
that is shaming people mm. or you know making comments about leaving how much early, work did you yeah. do leaving early mm. what did you do this weekend like oh but i have to work mm. and i will admit that that still creeps into the culture that we have here um i certainly do everything i can to not be partaking in that and will al always as much as possible um speak to people when i do see that creeping in but i do i definitely know that that contributes to my guilt you know when i hear those comments in the office mm -hmm. and it could be from you know someone who's only been in the company for two months and mm -hmm. they didn't mean it it's not ill-intentioned it's just maybe something that from their last work that has now you know, they've now carried into this new workplace mm -hmm. because they were in a toxic work culture and i hear them say that and i feel it straight away i'm like oh okay you just that makes me feel really guilty yeah, about you know leaving yeah. yeah yeah exactly it, it triggers me um so i think you know in organizations if you are someone who feels this or suffers from it you know have a look at the people around you mm. and try to pick up on whether that's language that's prevalent within your team and if you are the leader and you don't want that to be a part of your organization number one you need to lead by example mm. and not be shaming people uh, for taking time off and number two you need to have conversations with the people who are doing it and make sure there is clarity on what the culture you want to have is yeah i think that's something we've worked very hard on here especially since we've moved away from a you work for your hour for hour based because when you do that then yeah you can see the amount of people that are working because they have to in order to get paid right and now that we have a lot more management responsibilities and jobs that you can do that don't require you to be in the premises it was a shift because now these people are able to do their jobs on the beach or at home where it's less noisy and people aren't screaming and singing all the all the whole day right and so it's like that was something we worked really hard on is like well we can't necessarily like as long as they're getting the work done there's no rule as to where they get it done yeah. but it's like we also believe that we do want to spend time together and we do honor that as well it's like oh we train together it's not a requirement but we know that that brings us closer together and that's a bond for us mm -hmm. and like we have these conversations that we do in the gym because we're not just colleagues but we're friends and we're family, you know what I mean? And so that's our time that we spend together. So we, we do value qual we do value time outside of solely work, but with the full trust and knowing that you are going to get your work yeah. done regardless of where you are, right? Yeah. And I also think that we, we recruit and hire based on people who want to be a part of a team. Yeah. We're not hiring people whose dream is to work Solo. on a remote island yeah. by themselves, but to be a part of the team remotely. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have people who see the value in being a part of a team and creating... Uh, quality connections with the people they work mm -hmm. with so because of that because that's a, that's a, the caliber of people that we're looking for we generally don't have many people who come into this organization and just kind of disappear and work on a computer yeah um, but what we are saying is that if you need that if that's where you get your best work done then like you know we want you to we want Take you to do it. that yeah well what's coming up next for you ed oh for <laughs> me well i mean right now it's wednesday is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday the twenty first of June. My birthday. Happy birthday! Oh yeah. <laughs> this is not, by the way, it's not the first time I said happy birthday to Izzy. It's a, he did forgot. He totally forgot. No, I did not. I'm just I, I would have been your first message this I'm morning. <laughs> um, so I was just just for listeners, it's Izzy's birthday. So even though by the time you listen to this, it will be, be three week weeks gone. post birthday. <laughs> you know, better late than never. Um, well, I'm in in a few days' time. I'm flying to Colombia. Did you, did you just Columbia. say it like that? <laughs> the reason I'm flying to Colombia, I haven't, I haven't voiced this on social media, but I think by the time this comes out, I will have, is I'm going to be getting stem cells in my knee. Um, so this has been, honestly, I would say the last five, six years of my life has been trying to research and understand if there's anything that I can do to get more out of my knee. Uh, the knee that I'm talking about is my right knee that's had a lot of operations had a really nasty infection in 2009 which really is the thing that crippled it so basically what i have is a degenerative degenerative knee so i have like a 90 year old knee basically is what all <laughs> the doctors say uh lots of osteophytes uh so like bone growth um very very little cartilage no acl no mcl a pcl which apparently is like clinging on for dear life right now it's there but it's like it's not got much longer. And apparently if my PCL goes, I literally don't have any ligaments in my knee holding it together. So I'm under a bit of time pressure right now. 
Um, and so basically, you know, I've, I've done a lot of research, spoken to tons of experts from all around the world, um, trying to see what I can do. And there is nothing for osteoarthritis, especially like, you know, stage three osteoarthritis. But um, what, what most of the world do is by the time they reach about the age of 60, they get a knee replacement mm. where they basically cut off the caps of either your, your thigh bone or your shin bone, give you a new surface and it makes it like really nice. You get nice gliding on top of one another, but I'm just too young for that. So every person I've seen has said like, you are a candidate for it, but if you have one now, you need another one and no one really has two knee replacements mm -hmm. in a lifetime. Of, obviously, surgical intervention and technology is improving so rapidly right now. So the, basically the last six years of my life has been sitting, waiting for technology to improve. And because I've been waiting, I've been like, okay, well, I have no op option right now other than to do everything I can within my power to get as much life out of my knee. And I think I've done a really, really good job of that. And I'm honestly so grateful for what I can do with my knee. I know there's people with knees nowhere near as bad as mine who can't do half of what I can do. And really there isn't a whole lot missing from my life that I can't do that I wish I could. I wish I could still play, you know, some form of rugby. I wish I could go out and play a football game without thinking my knee might snap in <laughs> half. Um, I would love to run more. Um, I would love to squat a little bit deeper, believe it or not, <laughs> I actually want that. <laughs> I would love my knee just to feel a little bit nicer when it's in the bottom of a squat. So there's lots of things I would love to have. And basically I'm at, I'm at a point now where, you know, I came across a company called Bio Accelerator who are, you know, one of the leaders in the US. Uh, they, they're a US based company who operate out of Columbia who are doing some stem cell treatment. Um, these are stem cells that are taken from an umbilical cord um, and injected into, you know, a third party being myself. Um, and, you know, stem cells a lot of the research is around like regeneration so it's regenerating tissue um so it can basically grow things that aren't there or are still there uh, but you know there isn't much left of them so that's kind of what i'm hoping to get out of this obviously surgical intervention stem cells anything nothing is ever guaranteed yeah. i mean look at my knee my knee this is a result of what should have been a very standard acl procedure which happens thousands of time every single day around the world and it went horribly wrong mm. um so yeah, that's where I'm off to. I'm off to Colombia for seven days. Yeah. Um, well, three of those days I've spent it's traveling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not the easiest trip to get there. Um, it was a big financial investment. Um, but you know what? This is like one of those things which is like kind of now or never. Mm. You know, there's not much cartilage left in, my, left in my knee. And if a cartilage is gone, then you can't, you can't regrow something that's not there. Mm. Um, so I am under a bit of time pressure. It's kind of like at the right point in the season where... You know, if I can bounce back, I can still do the open. This will be my 11th straight cross with open. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, but also very excited. Actually, I really appreciate you calling me out the other day <laughs> when you asked, how are you feeling? And I was probably a bit more negative than I normally am, which was like, yeah. I am really nervous about it, actually. You know, like, I don't know. The thing I'm thinking about more is actually just the traveling, but that's because I haven't done. I said this to uh, Cammy, my partner, the other day. I haven't done a flight over four hours in over four years yeah. like i haven't flown to europe haven't flown to yeah. any of these and i've got a 25 five hour flight in economy coming up yeah. um on saturday through a few countries so that's one thing i'm nervous about but you basically reminded me and said you need to reframe your shit <laughs> and you, you get positive because and you're right because it's like if i'm i know if i'm if i have a negative connotation around it that's going to be manifesting itself in my body mm -hmm. maybe that's why i have a stomach bug right now oh, i don't know are, yeah. yeah maybe it's subconsciously like i am thinking about it more and mm. my body's caught a bit of a bug right now so yeah that's what's happening in my life yeah no i'm excited for you i think taking the steps that you need to do just doing all we always say that like do all you can to do it and then whatever happens after that at least you can say you've done everything within your control and then it's just let the world play out its part right and then after that you have i have a holiday you do have a holiday yeah so i have a uh, we have mr ali reese long serving process and coastal yeah. member is getting married to katie that's a that's a coastal it process is. wedding, by the way. It is. We should, you be should ask some, them to brand some it. Some cut of some sort, yeah. <laughs> or maybe Our banner like, should be at the back of the wedding photos. Surely, like <laughs> the process engraved on the inside of the ring, <laughs> not not for everyone to see, but just like they, so they, they know. know, so they know, so they're indebted to us forever. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna message him after this <laughs> and suggest the idea. So going to the wedding, um, that's going to be in Scotland, um, and then we're going to be going to France with my partner for a few couple of weeks before mm. that. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Like a European summer is actually one of my favorite things. 
Um, and again, just being that side of the world, haven't been that side of the world yeah. in f over four years. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I'm very, very excited. But what about you, Isabel? You got, you got some big life things coming up. Well, I think the biggest thing is that I'm having a baby. That's the one I was referring to. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a crazy adventure through it all. Very unexpected. I think what... I don't know if there's just a lack of education around it or I've just never seeked education around it. So I'm kind of unsure of where that is. I think there hasn't been a lot of conversations about how not life it's very life-changing but like mentally how it takes a lot of toll on you on your identity on um giving up pieces of yourself that you pr no one's ready to give up or sacrifice and all those kinds of things um but it's been magical it hasn't always been beautiful it is painful <laughs> what, what have been some of the biggest struggles yeah mentally i think has been my biggest struggle like I said in the beginning the first trimester was really tough because you're not telling anybody during that time just because the first 12 weeks you have a high chance of a miscarriage right and so keeping something that big to yourself and then making big sacrifices like all of a sudden my training went from high intensity peaking for the open to now I was doing tempo back squats and single leg stuff right and it was just like people were like what are you doing and I was like oh I'm just deloading preparing you know what i mean so it's like then you feel that weirdness of like not telling the truth and stuff like yeah. that um and then you're tired all the time like you're not able to perform like i'm a high performer and everything that i do i want to work all the time i want to train i want to do i want to be just doing something constantly and all of a sudden it was like nope you have zero energy to do any of that and mm -hmm. then you just had like i had a huge identity crisis being like is this my life like Am I going to be like a sack of shit for the rest of my, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was just hard. And then finally that wave of the second trimester comes out, but then your body starts changing and then everything hurts. It's like my hips was hurting. I was getting calf cramps all the time. I had really bad insomnia for loads of time. And then you're like, well, now at first I was giving up my ability to do things and now I'm giving up my body. And like I had huge body image issues for a long time of my life and it's like the first little bit you just look like you've had too much cheeseburgers and it was like oh god I don't really like the way that I look right now you know and like <clears throat> it was that was hard as well and I think now what's the difficult part of it is again what is my life gonna look like with a baby right and I think I always have to remind myself that it is what you decide that it's going to be and I'm very very fortunate that I have a job that it's so accommodating to like like we said work schedule but also being able to bring my child here and literally have every single person in the team being like we'll take her you know like bring her in here we'll look after her we'll do whatever if you have meetings and stuff like that and so it's like I feel less I can't imagine what people who have nine to five feel like and they literally can't be with their child for that amount of time um but yeah Physically, I am feeling, I've been able to train. I was just thinking that today. Today is probably the first time and I'm almost seven months in where I haven't progressed the load like because I've actually been unable to, whereas for the last seven months, I've still been making gains. I've still been making progress. Like mm. I still have the muscles in places that I want and I'm sure that I'll be able to come back. But today was actually the first time that I haven't, that I've been like, oh shit, I can't go any heavier. Or, oh, I can't do any more. So I'm very lucky in that sense. And I've been enjoying navigating that with you because I have the full intention of coming back to compete after. I feel like that's a new, fun, exciting challenge for both of us to undergo being like, okay, well, postpartum, what can we do? What does that feel like? What does that look like? And I, I'm excited for that, that part of it. Um, but it's also been nice feeling like I'm not alone throughout this. Like I know you've been he heavily involved with Camille as well, just because like it's a season of life that we're in, like Petra and Liam, like having those conversations, even though Ant thinks my belly is really gross and weird, he still is interested in those kinds of conversations. So it's like, it's been nice to feel like it's been our pregnancy. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like yeah. every, it's been a coastal team's pregnancy that we're all invested and interested in it's made it feel a lot less lonely than what potentially could be for someone who doesn't have such a big tribe like i do yeah and i think we've i've certainly loved being let in to yeah. be a part of it um i remember when when you first start when we first started training around the pregnancy um you were i think you felt a lot of guilt yeah 
um, thinking that Ed's not going to want to trade me. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I was a competitive athlete and if we were getting you know, really fired up. That's what he likes. And he's, he doesn't want to trade a pregnant woman. <laughs> um, and I said to you, I said, I, I love this challenge. Like chat, I, that's what I just love about training in general. It's just the whole idea of challenge. Like you're, you're navigating something mm. and you're trying to build a roadmap, find a solution to something. And, and it's nice when the person you're helping is someone you can see every single day um, and we can work through it together. And yeah, you've actually, I think you've navigated really well. Training's remained a part of your week. Mm every week you've had definitely some rough weeks for sure where we've had to self-regulate a lot more and change things up but i think the training program and training around pregnancy is it's like it's a fun challenge Mm -hmm. um and it it really takes if you know if you are a coach who works with someone who is pre or postpartum like communication is so so important like you need to have super honest open communication and it needs to be a team effort i mean i believe that with any client to be honest but even more so with this because you know one thing you were talking about was like there's this lack of education or information out there i think especially around like the fitness population yeah because in the fitness population of women who are getting pregnant it can be so varied i mean even not in the fitness population like the the, the experience that people have can be so so different you look at someone like a tia uh tia to me mm-hmm. who just was doing the crossfit open a month final. before a quarter finals a month before <laughs> popping and was like training with the high intensity. She's doing handstand push-ups. Mm. She's doing kip and pull-ups. Like all these things that are big no-nos in the textbooks. And she's doing it and she's thriving. Mm. And she's now one week, two weeks post-birth. And she's back. On and it. she's back. She's back training. And like she's baby's back lifting healthy. Weights. And baby's healthy. Yeah. She's healthy. She's yeah. feeling good. And it's like you have someone like that that just defies all the rules. <clears throat> and, you know, like we just talked about before the podcast, like what does that do for women who are seeing that? Mm for lots of people it's going to be inspirational something that i've certainly taken out of it is like okay wow you know what the human body can do way more than we give it yeah. credit to it. i think i think that all the time in so many walks of life different people different clients myself the human body can do something a lot more than we think and i think for a lot of people the stigma around what they shouldn't be doing then seeing someone like tia i think loosen you know changes yeah. that perception a little bit to be like okay actually maybe i maybe it's not the end of the world if my hips go above my head and therefore blood goes to my head and could be potentially harmful for the baby, right? That was something that was, a you know, one of the first bit, yeah. things you read about in second, third trimester stuff. So that's been really, really cool for me. But again, it's just taking the pressure off a bit and it's more like, okay, Izzy, like, how do you feel? Yeah. Like, what do you feel comfortable with? Like you, you've been running pretty much every week up until pretty, like pretty much this week. Ago. Yeah, two yeah. weeks ago, which, you know, for a lot of people like incontinence doesn't feel comfortable um, so running is one of the things that kind of gets taken out of the program, mm. but you've actually been feeling good the whole time. That's been something your body's been craving. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not going to tell you to not do something that your body wants to do. Mm. And sometimes you just got to try like anything. It's like, okay, go for a run. Don't, that doesn't mean a marathon, but like, you know, <laughs> go for a couple of K run. How did it feel? Okay. I felt all right. And then let's see how you feel tomorrow. You bounce back and that felt great tomorrow. Mm. Okay. Well then let's keep on doing it. Yeah. And as soon as it doesn't feel comfortable, then we start to make those changes. Or do you think from a programming standpoint, you know, we've been trying to, you know, it's good. It's also good hearing that it's like, I couldn't progress it today. And it's like, I already know next week we have a new program anyway. Like we're changing things up. So we are not really, especially second, third trimester when, you know, mood and energy is fluctuating so, yeah. so massively and your body's just changing, right? <laughs> like joints are getting looser yeah. and ranges are getting bigger. You've now got this lump in front of your body, <laughs> which means like things like Olympic lifting can't really do anymore. Yeah. Um, so with all those things it's like you just got to you just got to navigate it kind of day by day and with the training is rather than creating linear progressions over a four or five week cycle we've kind of been doing two weeks Mm. and then we change things up two weeks change things up so early part of the pregnancy we could run like four or five week cycles the deeper you get into pregnancy that starts to move to three side three week cycles now we're kind of like two week cycles it's probably at a point where it's just going to be like take it week by week Week by week just move like it doesn't really matter what we do let's get some form of hinging pattern some form of squatting pattern push pull and like we're going to be good to go we just need to survive this last couple of months (laughs) and get out the other end yeah pop baby out and then we'll we'll reevaluate no it's been it's been fun i think like i said it's been a collective effort for it in terms of even getting my work done getting training done um, navigating what this next stage of life looks like for all of us. Cause like I said, this is 
it's going to be all of our baby. You know what I mean? Like it's a huge, and that's what I love about this company and our job is that one person's win or one person's challenge everybody takes it on with them and i know that it's just gonna be something that elevates us i don't know what blessing she'll be for all of us but i know that it'll it's gonna change something within us and it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun new thing to be able to tackle along with all of you guys so yeah she comes out in september which i think is actually an ideal time for us it's a slower time in the season you know what i mean and then when i'm fully recovered back in january we're back again to like doing all the things that we want to do which will be fun well we actually said that if you're going to have a baby you need to have that thing out before the open because that's when we're busy <laughs> that's when we're the busiest <laughs> we didn't really by the way guys no. um <clears throat> well it's it's been good catching up it has um we should do this this stuff more often <laughs> actually one of our one of our subscribers and uh frequent listeners of podcasts was like you should do the catch-ups more and like when we used to do the catch-ups with ed and paddy yeah. love you paddy um you know i think people really valued that mm -hmm. i think giving people a bit of an update and insight into what's happening in our lives and within this business and not yeah. just interviewing people all the time yeah. i think is important yeah all right izzy well you have yourself a lovely day thank you, you for being a guest bye <laughs>